Hi guys, it's Charlie Alejandro, the director of the Massachusetts State Police Museum and Learning Center. How are you? I figure I'd follow up because as you know, last Friday I was in Pennsylvania in Rosetto at the Hope Manufacturing Company and they were there to match up that amazing green blouse coat that I got that I showed you guys. I'm trying to match up the fabric and the style so we can get them reproduced. So we're back at the museum. It was an adventure in itself. I got to pick it up yesterday and bring it back home where it belongs. So I'm gonna flip the camera real quick over here. It's funny because, um, there we go, flip. So here he is in all his glory. As you can see, I, I know it's only a blouse coat, but I can't help it. I'm just so fascinated with it. I know it looks stunning when I showed it to you up close, but now, as you see it dressed up in the mannequin, it just goes to show how incredible this artifact is. And again, a lot of people back in the day didn't think their coat that they were wearing was one day going to be in a museum and was going to be valuable to us, but it is. So again, I want to show you the delicate details, obviously the buttons. And like I told you before, this coat is from between 1921 and 1933. So roughly we're looking at a coat that's close to 90 years old, give or take, and it's in amazing, amazing condition. So one of the things that I did show you before, but you can really see how amazing it looks with the patch now, how it really stands out. If you notice the simplicity of the patch that it was back in the day, it had the gold and the black, and it really did pop. Of course, this is way before reflective materials or any of that. One of the things that I want you guys to look at, and I might be going a little too geeky detail in here, but humor me. I'm going to go in close. Look at the detail of the stitching. Now you can see that that was machine sewn, but by a person, not like a computer controlled machine. And you can see the little imperfections, which just made it so much personable. Also, you can also see the details too, if you notice the little imperfections as you look down at the seams. Now I'm going into a lot of detail with this because I just want people to understand the work that goes into it and the time and effort that's gonna go into reproducing this. One of the challenges that we had is the fact that the fabric itself, we can't get it reproduced exactly alike. So it's, we're going back and forth between a darker green and a lighter green, but trying to get it as close as possible. I'm going to give you a quick little peek. This is basically where we're going to be setting up the runaway exhibit. I'm not going to show it all to you because you guys have to come and check it out when we're finally open. Uh, we were hoping to be open by December, but we do have to go before the planning board to make sure that the use is what it's meant to be, that we're in compliance, you know, just like every other business. That's all we'll have to do. So um, as soon as we know an opening date, we'll definitely let you guys know and we're going to have a big event. Um, just a little peek here. So this mannequin here that you actually see here, that's not where it's going to stay. We just put it there because we're arranging the whole area as best we can. But for now, he's right there. At some point when we do have the full uniform reproduced, then it'll have the pants. And the other thing too is that we actually have a volunteer. His name is Thomas Taint and he is able to recreate things. So one of the things he's going to actually make for us is the old style leather gear that went with this. Again, not something that you can just go on eBay or Amazon and buy. So we're having them reproduced. I'm going to swing over here real quick and just show you. The reason I'm doing this is for you guys to see the amount of work that goes into doing this. I know you guys know we had a fire and we're in the process of rebuilding. So one of the cool things that we have now is we're actually going to have a physical gift shop. As you can see, it's getting set up. So people, the general public will be able to come in. They'll be able to buy items. You can still order them online, www.mspmlc.org. If you go on there and at the top of the website, if you hit shop, you'll be able to go into our online gift shop, which is up and running. We actually are able to take orders now. Don't forget the holidays are coming. These are some of the cool items that we have. These are actually gonna get put up on the website pretty cool soon. But if you want one, don't forget to uh, hit me up on Facebook Messenger and we can definitely get the orders out. So this is the uh, USMC that just had a birthday. Hoorah! We have the Bruins. I love hockey, but they're struggling. They really are. 
of course, our Patriots. And then we have the Red Sox over here. And Celtics are a hot ticket item. We actually are very low on those, but there they are. So I'm really um, excited about the ability that we have now with an actual physical gift shop. One of the other things we're gonna have in the gift shop is books. Now these books aren't gonna be just any books. They're gonna be books created by, excuse me, written by former troopers. Um, one of our first book here is the book that Ron Gilmet just wrote, First to Serve. That's also available online if you're interested. It's a really good read. We also have some other books coming down the pipe. We have Shotgun that was written by Dana Owen. That's also available online. We haven't put them out front yet. And uh, hey, if you're a trooper, you've written a book, hit me up. We'd love to have your book in the gift shop. There's a couple of other, other, other ones. I'm not going to ruin the surprise, but actually I'm in the middle of reading a book right now and I'm going to put them on blast. Mike Conti wrote an amazing series called Jelly Bryce and as if I didn't have enough to do already, I can't put the dang book down. So yes, I have not been sleeping for the last couple of days thanks to Michael Conti and his book. I'm going to show you guys something here going back up to the uniform. So here is the swatches that we were talking about. Now one of the things that I showed you on... Friday, if you were paying attention. So this is the fabric. This is darker than what the original fabric was, as you can see. So the one we're actually gonna get is kind of in between the two. But to actually reproduce it exactly to the same specs is nearly impossible because that it just doesn't exist anymore. Like trying to find the pattern to get it done identical. And obviously the fabrics are made differently. The dyes are different. So just that in itself is something that, I guess you can say we're very meticulous, but we wanted to get it as close as possible. One of the other things the manufacturer did, which I thought was really cool, as you can see here, we actually got a sample of a jacket. Let me scooch over here. So as you can see, give me for a sec. This is the back of the jacket that was given to us. And one of the things that, let me put it on the counter. So if you notice, jackets nowadays, the lapels in the back are different. See, they're wider, they're not as tapered. Whereas back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and even 50s, it was tapered, just to give it that nice crisp look. So let me flip this over around for you guys real quick. Now you really have to be a history geek to hang out with me because I could talk about this all day. Now if you notice here, let's see the lighting over here, the tapering on the goes in and that was to give it a nice crisp blouse effect. I learned about blousing in the academy, how to make sure my shirts fit because they were huge on me so I had to tuck in tons of fabric. So if you see the blousing effect is going to be different. We can't actually recreate this now because that's not the designs that are made. So it's gonna have the effect here, as you notice. Average people probably would notice I'm a little more observant because I'm so obsessed with the detail that, that I noticed it. So it won't be as tapered, but then we'll just have to pin it back. And as you can see, this outfit, it's amazing that it survived. This was actually in the building during the fire and we were lucky that it was upstairs but you can actually see some of the damage just from time because it is, like I said, it's this one's probably, if not 90 years old, close to it. Now, one of the things that winds up happening when you have a museum and you want to recreate the uniforms, Herb, Kobe, Kerb, Herb Cody, he's one of our volunteers, he does a lot of flea marketing, flea marketing and going out to different areas. So he actually found this shirt which is a vintage, I think this is World War II or World War I. So he found the vintage sh shirt that's actually what the troopers used to wear back in the day with the black tie. So yep, that's pretty much how it's gonna be. The other thing the factory was nice enough to give me as an example, excuse me over here, is the ever popular breeches. So obviously this design nowadays isn't as baggy as they used to be back in the day because back in the day we'd ride horses or you'd be on a motorcycle and you had to have more mobility. So these are a little bit more tapered than what they were in the day, but they're gonna reproduce them in the same fabric of green. 
as you can see this is like a polyester mix so it's not going to be that and it's going to have the wide stripe on the side with the black and like I said the inside of it has to be the satiny material because unfortunately they don't use this kind of fabric anymore in mass producing and one of the things I didn't know if you noticed before there's the hand stitching so this is completely the lining itself is actually hand sewn so this is just to update you on what we're doing like i said we're reproducing six of them at some point once we have them there'll actually be a program in the learning center flip it over there'll be a program in the learning center that will have actors dressed up in the uniforms and they'll be able to give presentations pertaining to the history and what was going on back in that time. Also be really cool because they'll be able to tell us what their duties were, where they traveled, what their responsibilities was. And we're not only going to do it with the troopers from 1921 and 1931, we also want to do it with the state police women. We're going to have a segment on that where we're going to talk about the fact that back in the day, we had state police women and they weren't technically police officers, but they did do investigations. What I found really ironic was the fact that their uniform was their Sunday best. So they were like literally wearing these tresses and heels, pearls. Yet, they were still being taught how to shoot a gun, first aid, CPR. There was actually an article in the Herald, I think in 1948, if I'm not mistaken, talking about them. And last year, I actually got to meet Barbara Johnson. She's She was the last official state police woman before they got rid of the program. And I think she the program ended in the early 60s if i'm not mistaken so hey sarah oh my god it's so funny when people i know are like actually listening to me you guys seriously do not have a life if you're hanging out with me but i appreciate it oh, i love you i like the fact that you like historical clothes i'm gonna flip it over real quick just to give you guys an overview real quick so this is basically once the hot mess is finished i'm actually tagging stuff this will be the front area. Again, this space here is amazing. I'm not even gonna tell you guys what we're gonna do with that yet, but again, quick peeks, it's gonna be a part of the exhibit hall. And this here, this bench is amazing. It was donated to us from a church that had, ironically, a fire in Methuen. And now it's gonna be the waiting bench. We're gonna refurbish the cushions and stuff for the kids when they come in through the tours, they'll be able to see that. There's our old radio, and as you can hear, I have the old music playing in the background because we to keep the 40s and 50s vibe going. Another thing that I found that was amazing, and I am so excited we're gonna have this in the museum, I'm gonna flip it again, is this baby. Some of you might actually know what this was. I love this thing. It actually still works, and Unbeknown to some people back in the day, they actually had cigarette vending machines in the police barracks, which I thought was freaking ridiculous. But then when smoking wasn't allowed in state buildings, it got turned over into a candy machine. So that's where it was used last. This was actually at GHQ in headquarters and we retrieved it from um, Supply and it's here on loan at the museum. And it's actually going to be, we're actually going to pack it up with retro candy. I thought that would be kind of cool. Now, if we can actually get it to vend, I'll be really excited. I'm going to have someone look at it. But if not, it'll have vintage candy from the 50s. There's a company that actually does it. So that's what we're going to do with that. Now, we're going to be conveniently located in South Clifton. Still not going to tell you where. Uh, but once um, we have everything, we'll definitely announce it. Please keep coming back to Facebook, check us out, and you know, just share the word, we're here. I know we did suffer a fire, and we have, seems like we've been floating with one oar, or no oar since February, but we're still here. Again, holidays are coming, if you wanna you know, give people cool, we have pins, we have t-shirts, polo shirts, hats, hit us up on the website and we can get your orders out in time for Christmas. Also, if you're feeling generous because you're thinking tax season, we are a nonprofit. So if you feel generous, please, please, please donate to the museum. Uh, www.mspmlc.org is our website. You can donate through PayPal and a portion of your donation will be tax deductible because we are a nonprofit. What I do ask you though, if you do make a donation, please specify on the check where you would like that donation to go. 
just because as a nonprofit, if you want it to go to anything pertaining to the museum, then you can just put that there. Or if you want it to go specifically for the learning center or you want to sponsor a display, you can totally do that. So, yep, if you're feeling generous, please write those checks. We were hoping to actually get a holiday party going for you guys in December, but unfortunately that's not going to happen just because of the way the planning board and stuff goes. But it's no big deal. We'll continue to, we're the, what, first in the nation and the finest. So, yeah, we'll continue to march. So stay posted. Uh, come back. Check on us. I will have other talks about other displays that we're going to be doing, other artifacts that are really cool. I'm actually going to be able to get some of our better artifacts out of the safety deposit box soon. And I'd love to talk about like Colonel Foote's desk accessories, some of the earlier badges that we have. And then we're also going to highlight some of the authors that we're going to be featuring in the gift shop. Because not only are they going to be featured in the gift shop, but they're also going to be invited to be guest speakers at our learning center. So in January, zoning board permitting. We're actually going to have Ron Gilmet. He'll be our first speaker. He'll come. We'll do a book signing. He'll read to his, from his book and you'll be able to ask him questions. And we're going to be having an author every month on top of other events that we'll be having. So remember, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, share, share, share. Make sure you get the word out there. Go check out our website. Hey, if you guys have a great idea for a display or if you guys have a great idea for maybe a lecture or something that you'd like to host in the Learning Center, please hit me up. I am more than open to any ideas you guys have. In the meantime, have a good night. Have a great Thanksgiving. Have plenty of turkey because I will actually be packing because <laughs> I'll be moving soon. But hey, enjoy your Thanksgiving. Have lots of fun. Any questions, concerns, whatever, hit me up. My email is charlie alejandro, all one word, at mspmlc.org. You can hit us up through Facebook. I am usually the one that answers right away. And again, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, hook me up. All right, guys, have a great night. And this is Charlie Alejandro checking out with you from the Mass State Police Museum and Learning Center Annex. Have a great one.